Hey everyone, this is Phil. We're filming this at the end of 2023. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you guys what I personally feel I wanna see in 2024 from each of these manufacturers. I did talk a little bit with my colleagues about it, so it's a kind of a joint opinion, but I think about this all the time. So let's get into it. <sighs> Octopus stamp. Are you comfortable? Yeah, he's, he says he's good. Keep in mind that this is like super unsolicited. It's not like Gan messaged and was like, hey, what should we do in 2024? So this is just unsolicited business information coming from people in the retail side. So let's talk about Gan first. So let's do this. Gan. Better budget cubes. So we're talking about like budget cubes in the scale of the RS3M 2020, where the price and the quality speak for itself and you don't need to force it to become some sort of educational tool in order for uh, people to buy it. GAN is totally able to make cubes like this. If GAN can engineer something as complicated as the GAN 12 or the GAN 14, they can totally do this. I think the main worry is just making sure they don't cannibalize their own products. But I still think that's better than making mediocre cheap cubes and then not having many sales. So. That's one of them. The other one is to buff their smart cube. GAN is right now leading the smart cube race. Uh, they have the best smart cubes in terms of hardware and the software is the best, but the software is still kind of weird. We get a lot of complaints about people not able to register an account or do really simple stuff. So I think they should keep some sort of effort into making it a good user experience for the global market. I'm sure it's better received in China because the software is natively in Chinese. But in order for smart cubes to make an impact in the world as a whole, probably should have better localization, at least in English and perhaps in other languages. GAN is the closest company to do that, which is why they were able to have that big smart cube event that you saw in China that looked like a big esports event. That was really cool. For that to have a global impact, they should aim for like the global market. Also, uh, they really need to figure out how to get better than the GAN 12. So like people are not using the 13 or the 14 and I have a hard time recommending the GAN 13 and the 14 because I just don't see a reason why they're better than the 12 and a lot of pro cubers still use the 12. So I think they need to reevaluate why they're making cubes instead of just releasing one every year. Maybe if they can do it by the end of 2024, they can release it. But I think uh, if they release another one that was yet again, not as good as the 12, I think we're gonna have a problem, especially if it's too expensive. They're also, uh, Five by five. We've been seeing some teaser videos on that. I think that's definitely gonna come out. And then the square one people have been talking about a lot, plus other puzzles. So like, I really wanna see a four by four. And then the mega, I feel like needs improvement because now it's been superseded by a bunch of other puzzles. So yeah, that's how we feel about GAN. But uh, we know GAN is a big three by three company. They churn out a lot of three by threes. We just want them to be more deliberate with their next release. So that is meaningful and that people can say, wow, this is moving forward in a good direction. So that's what we're hoping for. All right, Moyu. All right, Moyu needs to stop things. They need to stop making so many three by threes and really figure out how to get consumers to focus. Like the Weilong Super, it's just dumb. I don't know why there's a space between the, the U and the M, but like, okay. There's two M's now. It's dumb. The whole like big box thing, and then like the cube is like right here. This is like a hundred dollars or something. That's crazy. You don't need this. And this is evidence that this company is trying to make a product seem way more valuable than it is. And it's not a very good way to do that. We have people asking, hey, if I get the Weilong Super and you just throw away the box and send me the cubes, can I get a discount? Because I know you don't want to ship the big package and I don't want to receive the big package, so maybe we can both benefit from throwing away the box. People do ask us that. I think this is overkill and definitely they should be more value oriented. Definitely we want a 4x4 and a 5x5. I know like Moyu was working backwards with the big cubes. They started with the 7 and then the 6, so maybe they'll go to the 5 and the 4. We just think that four and five are areas in the market that are very underdeveloped. The GAN 5x5 is on the way. People are excited about it. I want to see MoU compete against that and introduce some challenge in the market where good 5x5 solvers can use really, really good modern hardware. 
Also, Moyu has released some other side events that weren't very successful, like the Square One. Definitely would be great for Moyu to challenge other producers of these kind of events, like Square One and Clock. And then also importantly, they need to figure out the smart cube thing. So it was really weird. Like they made a smart cube this year and then they abandoned it. It was really bad. It like made no sense why they would invest so much in designing this thing and then just not care about it at all. I really want to see them either scrap it entirely and focus on other projects or just like do something with the smart cube that would really make Gan worry. You know, then I think that competition in the market is going to cause everybody to do better and better, which is good for the consumer. Another topic that might not seem as major is the blank center cap issue. Moyu has basically refused to issue center caps that are not branded on UV coated cubes. And as a result, some of these cubes are not usable for blind events or they're not usable by people who want unbranded cubes. I know Moyu has an interest in maintaining its brand on products that they rightfully produce, but there's a regulation that kind of makes that challenging. So hopefully they can be more flexible with that. I don't see a downside if they include something or they even send it to stores to sell for like a buck or two. I just hope that they're more flexible with this because it's becoming a very hot topic on social media platforms and people are talking about it and being frustrated. This doesn't seem smart. You know, I, I think this causes people to resent the brand and it's achieving the opposite effect. You know, there's on one hand, you get benefit from having a brand everywhere and the other benefit, which is like making people happy. And I think making people happy is more important than forcing your brand everywhere. I think Moyu gets a lot of exposure already, and if they can get people to use the puzzle, then that's arguably exposure enough, and I think that would be nice. All right, Chi'i. So Chi'i needs to make a Tornado V4. This is really important. They're taking their time on this, which is okay, because they didn't release something bad. The Tornado V3 was a wildly popular cube. We hope that in 2024, Chi'i can make a sequel to that, that will compete against whatever other new cubes manufacturers make. Again, will probably make one or two, and Moyu will make 650, but the TV4 is really important. We want to figure out what happens to the Valk. Like, what's the deal here? So Chi'i stopped production of the Valk 2, which is a world record setting puzzle. Now there's like a vacuum in their market where Chi'i doesn't have a two by two that's super competitive, but then they just completely deleted the product that was competitive. Uh -huh. So they need to figure that out. We don't know the details between the agreement between Chi and Mods Valk, but they're still selling certain Valk cubes like the Valk 3 and the Valk 5. I mean, the Valk 5 is still competitively viable. Yeah, there's no explanation why certain cubes are discontinued and certain cubes are still on the market. But I think getting rid of the Valk 2 was a really weird decision. They should at least, if possible, just rebrand it or redesign it for 2024 and just come out with it and see how the market likes it. Because I think a lot of people ask for the cube. My answer to that is like, I don't know, go like check eBay or something or something secondary market. So yeah, figure out what the deal is with the Vox because it's not consistent and it's really unclear. Big cubes wise, I think like seven, six, four, like all of these cubes are severely outdated. Maybe the Spark is the most viable out of like the Shadow and the Ambition. I think the Shadow and the Ambition have fallen out of favor. And also we want to rebound on square one. So the Vault V2 used to be like the square one until the MGC. So I think in terms of competing with the MGC, Chi is the closest because they had the last competitively viable square one. So definitely rebound the square one, maybe compete against MGC would be really nice. And I want to see more of Jim. Jim is a god. I don't know if you guys know Jim, but he's the uh, designer of XMD. He's a really smart dude. Like he's making smart cubes. He's like an engineer. He does a lot of stuff. He's an important guy. I want to see more of him on social media and on YouTube. I think the community would really benefit from just seeing what's in his head. Cause anytime like I hear what he says, I'm like, yeah, this guy knows. Definitely. I think Jim is a huge asset in Chi -E, and it would be great for the community to know him better. I think it would be really good for branding too, to have like a guy that people can say, oh, that's the Chi Yi guy that's making all these cool things. I think that'd be really cool. All right, the last thing is like, definitely they also need to work on the smart cube. Basically any company that has shown any interest in making smart cubes should just continue to do it, but in a way that's logical and doesn't just abandon the product. So I think Chi Yi is not a company that abandons. So I think that'll be really cool. So this is basically what we're hoping for Chi in 2024. I know this centered around a lot of WCA puzzles. Chi makes a lot of non WCA puzzles as well. So hopefully they can continue that as well and yeah, do it very well and ethically.
All right. So YJ has relatively good big cubes. So what we're hoping for with YJ is that for the big cubes, they experiment with additions. So like UV coating or bong core, you know, something that they can add to an originally sound design that makes the cube a little bit better. I'm not saying a bong core would automatically make a cube better, but it probably will. And hopefully YJ can manufacture that because they've already done a good job manufacturing base 4x4s, 5x5s, etc. They really need to figure out 3x3. Three three. I feel like all their attempts to make a 3x3 three three have failed. There is not one YJ that I would actually main in the history of the company. I can't think of a cube that I'm like, oh yeah, I'd get pretty good times on that. Definitely if they unlocked this market, that would be really sick. But it's a lot easier said than done because engineering a good 3x3 three three and beating Gan, Moyu, and Chi is not easy because they're all very smart designers and engineers. But YJ is also really smart. So maybe they'll find a way to do it and it'll be really cool. It's just weird that their 3x3 three three is clearly so wildly different from every other cube they make. If they just made a 3x3 three three that was kind of similar in vibe to the 4, 5, 6, yeah. 7, it would be a pretty decent cube, I think. Yeah. But like, they just keep trying wildly different things that don't work out. Yeah. So I think the strat for 3x3 three three is to start basic. Like, they don't need to make the next GAN 12. I think they need to make the next RS3 2020. You know, YJ is already developed a really good reputation for making budget cubes. So it stands to reason that if they made a super basic budget cube that just had magnets and adjustable elasticity, nothing fancy for like $10, they could make a lot of money and sell a lot of cubes that way and potentially reinvigorate confidence in the YJ brand for three by threes. And then they can use that as a springboard to make something more advanced. I, I think Jesse is right when he says that all their three by threes in the past few years have been just so wildly different in terms of design philosophy to the big cubes. Like they have all these weird gimmicks and different features, but none of the cubes actually work very well. So starting basic, eliminating the compulsion to be fancy is gonna be really helpful. YJ, I wanna see them post more on social media, bro. Like, where are they? Yeah, I really wanna see YJ be more social as well. I know they post kind of sporadically on social media. It'd be really nice to stay engaged and maybe if they made a three by three that was basic and desirable, then it would make more sense and they would have more things to post about. So yeah, definitely uh, be more social would be very cool. Okay, Dian Cheng, Dian Cheng needs to get good and they need to capitalize on the investment. So they spent a lot of money acquiring MS Cube and from my perspective, they have very little to show from it. Like if I acquired a company and I spent what I think is enough to acquire it, a company with engineers and factories and stuff, I think I would be uh, in danger of losing my job if it turned out like Dian Cheng and MS Cube because they don't really have any cubes to show for it. Like I can't name one cube where I'm like, wow, what a great cube. I think the MS3X is okay. It's like kind of comfortable, but then everything else just seems very, very forgettable. And so definitely want to see them capitalize on the MS cube investment. They are doing a great job on big cubes, like the magnetic big cubes. They're basically magnetizing cubes that no one else wants to magnetize. And I think that's really good. So like making unique puzzles is a strength uh, that Dian Cheng has. Definitely they should continue doing that because a lot of people really like the puzzles that are magnetic and they can't get it anywhere else. So Dian Cheng is the winner there. I don't really have too many comments about Dian Cheng, but I think the first two points are very important. They just need to get cubes that people talk about positively, which I haven't really seen because everyone's kind of lukewarm on the puzzles. And instead of releasing so many, they should focus on quality over quantity. Diane. Okay, Diane, I really want to see them be social. Like they've released some pretty fantastic puzzles. Like the Guhong Pro is a very solid cube. The Diane Megaminx Pro is the first Boncore Megaminx, which is really exciting. And the 5x5 is pretty good too. They have really positive things to talk about. I really want to see them expand in the international market. Maybe one of their staff members speaks English. They can have more social media posts or just more engagement with the audience. I think that'd be really cool because Diane right now, given what they've released in 2023, is a brand worth respecting. So yeah, Jesse was just saying that he wants to see 
die and make a UV coated cube, or maybe he wants to see him go all out and make like a super flagship. I think that's really cool. And Dian definitely has the capabilities of doing it. The design of the old Tanyuns, like especially the Tanyun V2 and the V3, they're really advanced. They have some really cool things inside. So Dian can definitely make cubes on a very high level. So we want to see a Dian flagship. We want to see what that looks like. Yeah, other than that, I mean, Diane is pretty good about releasing puzzles. They released the ball core of Megaminx when no one really asked them to do that. Like it kind of came out randomly, I feel. They could have made something a lot more simpler, but they were like, nope, ball core Megaminx. No one needs to ask Diane to make things. They were kind of doing that. But to see a flagship three by three. Rubik's, okay. I think like, Rubik's does a lot in the speed cubing community that people don't realize. Like they put in a lot of investment into competitions. So I feel like working on recognition would be really helpful because like, I think any company that sponsors events and people wants recognition that they're contributing to the community. And uh, definitely Rubik's has earned that recognition by actually giving money and support and resources to people and events. So I'm hoping that they do more to capitalize on that to get more people to recognize that they are contributing. So a lot of people think like, oh, Rubik's is an old company. They're a bunch of dinosaurs. They don't make cubes. That's like a very old sentiment that people sometimes don't have. Whether that's true or not, they're still contributing very meaningfully today. Though they might not contribute the way we expect, they're still doing a lot of work and helping out. And then other random companies like, uh, what do we got here? Like Mortri, Peak Cube, MS Cube. Oh, they don't exist anymore, Never mind. We wanna see more stuff. Cause like Mortri still posts on social media. Like I still see them write stuff about the Tianma. People are getting like records, mostly in blind uh, on the Tianma. And then Peak Cube just kind of disappeared. All right, what's one brand you wanna see release a cube that hasn't released in a long time? Fangxi. Yeah, I was about to say uh, Guoguan. I think his name is Zhang Guoquan or something. Yes. Okay, so we want Guoguan, if you're still alive, dude. Release the thing. Fangxi. Okay. I want the Shuangren V3. Yeah, the Shuangren V3. Yep. We want that. Yeah, I think the cubicle, we just need to release a Ben Majin plushie. I'm working on that. So yeah, that's about it for the video. Keep in mind that it doesn't cost me or Jesse anything to make these comments. Like, oh yeah, make a better three by three. This is uh, not an attack on these companies, obviously. A lot of work goes into making cubes. These are just lighthearted discussions on what we feel like these companies should do given the patterns of behavior and the competitive forces in the market. These are not easy decisions to make. Definitely telling Gan to make a cube better than the 12 when they've tried twice already. You know, it's a lot easier said than done. And at the end of the day, we're just saying stuff. Yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you agreed or disagreed with anything that we said, please definitely let us know in the comments. We'd love an intellectual discussion about the speed cubing market. That's about it. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you later. Let's go, Benjamin.